So the reason why I haven't uploaded any videos for the last three days is Mrs. W and I uh, were enrolled in a, a pretty intensive blacksmithing class. Uh, I thought it was going to be kind of a basic rudimentary type of class, a really entry level. This is your fire, this is your hammer, but it wasn't. It was, uh, man, we jumped in and really started going. It was very challenging mentally. It was very challenging physically, and we learned so much. I would like to show here uh, a few clips of um, the shop so you can kind of get a flavor for it, and then I'll show you what uh, we made. So here's a sample of some of the things that we made. You know the thing that appeals to me the most about blacksmithing, what was so cool, is the instructor had us make our own tools. We made all the tools that we needed to complete the projects. And the project being, I guess the final project for me, was building a, a set of, um, of tongs from scratch, which unfortunately I didn't get to finish, but I'll finish them here. So these are some of the tools. This is kind of a mix of what Mrs. W and I both made, but it was really wonderful. So we started with making simple things. These are bending forks here. So these were for bending and doing scrolling work. This here is a tool. You know, it's very cool uh, to build a tool. You know, talking to the blacksmith and being around there, you know, he was showing us tools that he built when he was young that he was still using today. And this is a tool made out of tool steel. Um, it's a, a punch, it's for punching holes in steel. And he showed us how to, uh, how to make it. This was all made from scratch, all out of hand. Uh, we tempered it, we hardened it, all the steel and vegetable oil. He taught us about that. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, I'm not gonna come, I'm not gonna be doing videos, you know, like so many people do that they take a, a particular class and then they come on YouTube, one, you know, I'm the expert now, I'm gonna show you everything. What I learned in this class uh, was that I don't know anything, um, but I did learn a few fundamentals that I kind of, at least a foundation to get started. Here's a chisel that I built, um, a walking chisel um, that I used for all sorts of things here, I'll show you in a minute. Um, a swaging tool to fit in the hardy hole, just all kinds of cool things. A little, this is a little, um, this is a drift uh, that I built out of tool steel here that I punched or that I enlarged all my holes for, for rivets, all from scratch. You know, it's pretty cool to be able to build tools from scratch and use them. And then the first project he, whoops, sorry about that. First project he had us build uh, was just a very basic fire poker. So you can see, you know, and, and starting with square stock and, and doing twists and, uh, and doing eyes. Um, actually, the first one was teaching us how to do eyes like this. This was the first one that I did there. And that was, um, he showed me some things that I didn't know before. So this is uh, Mrs. W's fire poker. You can see there. So how to finish the metal to get that, that nice waxy look on it. Um, and then we moved on to some other things. Uh, he showed us how to make, uh, make leaves. And I, every time you, everywhere you look around, everybody's making leaves. And I think it's because they're so fun to make. I asked him if is that was an, was that an old thing or is that something that has been done recently? And he said, no, I think it's probably more recent. You know, the old blacksmiths they had to make a living; they didn't have time fooling around with leaves. Uh, so there's a leaf. Though. So this would be a, the future would be a hook uh, for my fire poker. And then um, here we made uh, made some some hooks. You can see just some basic stuff, doing twisting and and uh, very rudimentary, not not very not very good. Uh, one of the most, one of the more difficult things to make uh, was this. This was the Old West fire poker. 
and you can see mine wasn't done very well, you know, overheated and all of that. But starting with an eye and then doing a, a really interesting twist like this with the, with the um, I forget all the terminology. But one of the hardest things was this started as a big, as a square piece of stock. And then we had to, we had to pound tapers and everything. We had to taper that all out by hand. And then of course you see a twist. And this is all one piece, you know, the end, the way it was designed and split. Um, and uh, pounded round and square, you know, all, all of those little things are just so much effort that went into it. And that all kind of culminated into the final piece. And the final piece being um, a, a, a pot hanger, or, or I guess a flower, flower pot hanger, I guess maybe it goes like that. Um, this, this was a, t a ton of work and it was actually pretty nice until some Philistine in the class grabbed mine by mistake and when they were doing the hot rivets, bent it all out of shape there and messed it all up, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. It's not very good, but what I did is I learned um, all so many techniques from doing it. It was a great project because it helped you to learn scale and, and how to do, of course, do the leaf and rolling and, you know, just little, little things like that. So this, this piece here started with this big, heavy piece of stock right there, and we had to, uh, of course, you had to cut all of this design all in there and, and roll all of that. And, and again, I'm not I'm not bragging about this. It's actually pretty terrible, but but it was a great learning experience. And one of the most difficult things was was this taper right here. You can see. So it started this big fat piece of steel here. I had to we had to draw that out all by hand. It took hours in and of painstaking blood, sweat, and tears to do that. And of course, very rude, but crude. But but that's that's the kind of that's, that's how uh, detailed the class was. Um, doing the hot rivets and all of those things. So it was, it was actually uh, quite wonderful, a very, a very wonderful opportunity. So after taking a class like that, a person has got to ask themselves, you know, do, what, do I, what do I want to do with this? Um, is this something that I want to pursue as a, as a hobby, pursue as a, as a career? You know, he said something in the class, uh, the blacksmith said something in the class that, that made a lot of sense to me. He said, you know, you can, anyone can be good at anything but you can't be good at everything. And so I, I've thought about that a lot the last couple of days. So what is it that I want out of life? And what is it that I want to do with my time? And as I was, I was organizing, as you know, Mrs. W and I are, are, are getting really serious about organizing our life. And that's also extending over to my shop, you know, putting things together here. When I was setting this up, I was thinking, okay, do, how, how good do I want to become at blacksmithing? And the reality is, is that we have a working homestead and there are things that need done and they need done quickly. I don't have time um, to spend um, as much as I would like making everything from scratch, but I don't want to neglect it. I still want to be somewhat proficient at it and have the tools and the abilities to do it. But I also want to really enjoy modern tools, welders, plasma torches and stuff to get things done that I want. So I guess what I decided, what's probably going to be best for me is to try to not to be an expert at either one of those, but kind of a more of a jack of all trades. And my friend Troy, remember that I told you the uh, swag porta band here. You know, he he really kind of got me going, and because of, um, of the way he was organized and the way he organizes his tools, and he sent me this organizer here. You can see, and here's a small version of it that's made up for fabricators. I'm, I'm jumping around over here, but I think. I'll try to come to some sort of a point here. Um, but I, I installed that on there and, and I put all my grinders and everything. And it's so nice because so many times that there are projects that I want to do or something that needs welded and the thought of dragging out the cords and the grinders and all the tools, um, sometimes you just, it's just such a hassle that you don't do it. So I, what I'm going to do is, is I've got, this is my metal fabricating area where I've always done it. I've got my heavy shop vise and the metal table and all of that. This side over here is all set up. Everything's plugged in. I've got my plasma torch stuff. I've got my grinders, everything plugged, ready to go. I can simply grab them and work. And my vise is going to be my metal fabricating area when I need to do stuff. This half, I guess this little bandsaw here from Troy is going to kind of delineate between the blacksmithing portion over here and the fabricating metal portion over here. So, and then I'm going to set up my forge and, and I'm look, gonna get a proper anvil. This little anvil was a, given to me by my old neighbor and it's, I don't know, it's not very heavy. It's maybe 70, 60, 70 pounder. 
I was working on 250, 300 pound ambles and there's just no comparison. So I am going to invest in an amble. Problem is, is finding them. They're expensive too. A used anvil in good condition, you expect to pay about $3 a pound in this area. New ones are about $5, 5 to $6 a pound, depending if they're cast or forged. But, so this is where we'll set the blacksmithing area up here. Um, I have access to the open door and get the smoke out of it. And be, we'll do more videos on this to come, but I learned so much from the shop on how to set up tools and how to have a good workflow. And it's really inspired me. So I want to continue with it and I want to be able to make my own tools and to be somewhat proficient with it. And, and who knows where that goes. But um, I, I think the, one of the real popular videos that I did that I always do is, is talking about workflow and how to set up a shop. And, and I learned so much from that class that I'm going to bring that into my shop as well. And I'll be sharing you, that with you in the future too. So just want to take a minute to, uh, yeah, to tell you what's going on and uh, we'll have, more blacksmithing videos coming up really soon, I have no doubt.